Episode 4, offered the Game of Thrones franchise redemption. The eighth season of Game of Thrones received a lot of negative press, which puts a heavy burden on any upcoming spin-offs. After viewers almost lost interest in the Game of Thrones finale, House of the Dragon is under constant pressure to uphold a particular standard of excellence for the franchise to continue. With The Red Dragon and The Gold earning the best reviews the prequel has ever had, the series has been a huge success thus far. In the most recent episode, after the breakup of the Blacks and Greens and the beginning of the Dance of the Dragons, Kristan Cole is advancing his army into the Crownlands, seizing castles that support Ranera. In an attempt to defeat an opposing dragon, he wants to entice the Blacks to send a dragon rider to battle him so that he may match them with the greater Vagar of the Greens. This leads to the first official dragon battle of the conflict, in which full of suspense and dramatic turns. The last major dragon combat in an episode of Game of Thrones occurred in Beyond the Wall, which aired in Season 7. Alan Taylor has directed some fantastic episodes in the series. Though the entire episode was very controversial and an early indication of Season 8's downfall, it has one of the best dragon moments in Game of Thrones. The idea of sending Jon Snow and a group of people akin to the Suicide Squad across the wall to find a white and present it to Cersei was absurd from the start, but what happened next further stretched the limits of the show. Beyond the Wall was overflowing with platitudes. The subversion of Game of Thrones was well known. Although there are numerous alleged plot holes and contradictions in the episode, the main point is that Game of Thrones has gained a reputation as a fantasy show with a realistic foundation. No one was ever really safe in Westeros, where any favorite figure may die. As a result, an episode in which the main protagonists keep fending off hordes of whites while the unidentified supporting people perish was absurd and tonally at odds with what made the show work so well. Game of Thrones was notorious for defying cliches, and Beyond the Wall was no exception. Returning Alan Taylor to the franchise for season 2 was a wise move for House of the Dragon since he has a track record of helming exceptional episodes when given the correct material. With a the 9th of June 10 rating on IMDb, The Red Dragon and the Gold is the highest rated show in the series, and fans and critics alike are lauding the show for reasons beyond just its stunning dragon action. Making the action to life with a poignant narrative is quite another. The bond between Emond and Egon, the theme of dragons going to battle, and Rhaenys Targaryen's eventual demise all have a great deal riding on them. In addition to being one of the best fight scenes in the entire Game of Thrones canon, Season 2, Episode 4 is also maybe one of the show's most poignant moments. It was astounding how well Rhaenyra and Jackery's chat was woven into the dragon's release, summarizing the episode's deep significance. Alan Taylor makes all the right choices. Two episodes of House of the Dragon and seven episodes of Game of Thrones have been directed by Alan Taylor. Before The Red Dragon and the Gold, two of his best ever Game of Thrones episodes were Fire and Blood, the season one finale, and Baylor, the penultimate episode in which Ned Stark is put to death. Considering everything, the Rook's Rest episode of House of the Dragon might be his best creation yet. I hope the video is enjoyable. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.